everyone! Welcome to another edition of Sunday Chat. When I made the video about how to be happy at work, I heard from a lot of you who, it wasn't just about your attitude, you really had some problem situations on your, at your work. It was either with your bosses or your co-workers. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. I'd also like to clarify that Although I am so blessed to be in an amazing job now with a fabulous boss, amazing co-workers, we function like a well-oiled machine. I mean, we're just a great team. It hasn't always been that way. At this company and other companies, I have had challenging managers, I have had sexual harassment, I have had micromanagers, I have had co-workers that throw temper tantrums, unprofessionalism, and I'm going to share some of those experiences that will hopefully help you draw on ideas of how you can deal with your personal situation. Each situation is different, and so I will put skip ahead buttons in, but I'd like you to try to be open-minded, especially for this first one. This first one is to talk to the individual. And I know right now you're going, ah, no, this person's a problem. I don't want to talk to them. And I understand that. Sometimes the person doesn't realize how they come across, despite how you may perceive them. They don't see that they come across that way. Sometimes setting boundaries and just giving them awareness can make them say, ooh, that person's not going to tolerate my behavior any longer. Um, sometimes letting them know that they've been heard and they're listened to can really help. One experience I had was with a coworker who was extremely unprofessional, would go, oh, I can't believe this, and make all kinds of muttering comments under his breath during a meeting. And he even got up and he'd walk out and, oh, you people are crazy, and all the flamboyant gestures. And I took him aside and I said, I'd like to talk to you about your behavior. Which brings me to the point of when you talk to somebody, you have to stick to facts. So I brought up the ex exact situation of what had just happened in the previous meeting and said, you said this and you were very upset. And he started in on me just like a freight train and it was very intimidating. And I stopped and tried to get past all of his upset and anger and hear his words. And then I asked him questions about what he was saying. And the more I questioned, the calmer he got. And there's a saying in psychiatry, if you lean into crazy, and sometimes that can help them stop being crazy. And before you knew it, this person felt validated and understood and cared about and was expressing themselves in a constructive manner. Then in meetings in front of everyone else, I was drawing him out and asking questions and this erratic behavior stopped and he was more and more professional and it was a positive cycle where the more he expressed himself positively the more he was respected and he didn't have to vent and do all of these things that were extremely unconstructive for him being heard. So the point is that sometimes just listening to somebody, understanding their perspective. I had another co-worker who was very mean, nasty to people and they knew it and they felt bad, and they had a lot of their own issues to work through, and we tried to help them with that, and to varying degrees it was a success, but the behavior was still there. And that brings me to my second point. You can't change people. So all you can do is have a discussion, lay out some facts, say your perspective. If you're being bullied, which some of you said you were, to say, you know, when you say something like this, it makes me feel like you're bullying me, trying to intimidate me, and very uncomfortable. I don't feel that that's professional. And stop. Don't over-explain. Let them say what they want. Their behavior may not change. That's entirely possible. You can't control that. You have told them how you feel. This will enable you, if you choose to go to your manager or to HR, to say, yes, I have tried to talk to the individual. So. That is a door that's open if you want to use it. I am somebody who always believes in talking directly to an individual first. If it persists, you may need to do that and know that that could have ramifications and they could be positive or negative. Just be aware, you know your situation best of what is appropriate. Another option would be to include them. When somebody is very gossipy, like a lot of you said, um, 
not working at the proper work ethic for the environment and you know the seeming lazy maybe if there's a way that you could coordinate with them and say hey do you want to do this project together and see if that helps them feel more part of the team and inspired to work together rather than an outlier that's gossiping and negative and all of those other traits for the people who said they're are people who are political and backstabbing, I probably would not recommend partnering with somebody because if they've shown a pattern of throwing you under the bus in the past, chances are they're gonna continue that. I would say with those people that you know who you're dealing with and it's up to you to adjust your behavior. Okay. So speaking of adjusting your behavior, regardless of your situation and whether you choose to talk to somebody or not, I would say use this as an opportunity. This is truly an opportunity for you to learn and grow. Even if you're able to talk to the other person and even if they remedy their behavior, it's an opportunity for you. I told you in my How to Be Happy at Work video that about eight years ago, I had a change of attitude. And that was prompted by having one of the most horrific bosses that I've had in my working career. And I'm grateful for that because I chose to not speak to this person. Our personalities just didn't connect and I knew it wouldn't be productive and it would only be detrimental to my career. I decided to not do anything and just figure out how to cope with it. And the rest of my advice in this video is around coping strategies. But one of the things that I did was change my attitude and to realize this was an opportunity. I could learn from this. I don't want to go to work with a pit in my stomach every day. I don't want to hate my job. And I actually like my job. It's the manager. How do I deal with that? And that was a, a real opportunity. And I've tried to hold on to being happy at work, even when work doesn't always go my way, even when things aren't perfect and positive, to really love my job. And I'm grateful for that opportunity. Some of the other suggestions I have are limit your time with that person. Very difficult to do if you're working with them closely or if it's a manager, but do everything you can to limit your time with them and surround yourself with positive people because if it's the people that are the problem, chances are there's a lot of good things about your job and maybe some other good people. So if you're only focusing on the negative, that can really drain you and pull you down. Try to find some good people, high energy, and some positive things that you do like about your tasks at your job. And then the final one is one you may or may not choose to do, but switch jobs, whether that's within the company or outside the company. And I would strongly advise, don't put a wall up at this. Don't think, no, I have X number of years invested in this company. I get this much money, this much time off, this much benefits of whatever, without looking. You would be surprised. And worst case is, you don't get anything that you're interested in or you get no offers. Maybe that'll make you realize I really need to make this job work and to be grateful for what I have, even if it isn't ideal. I hope that this helps. I know how much work is a part of our everyday life and how difficult it is to go in when you hate the environment. But it maybe if you can act in a way of setting a role model that you will rub off and bring everybody up to a higher level. I really hope that it's helpful and in some ways this helps you to make your job a better place where you can be happy because that is so important. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you next time.